We're Kaylee and Lindy. Each week we take you behind the scenes of our two acre permaculture homestead to show you what it's really like to grow your own food and develop a sustainable homestead property. Let's go. I believe Good morning and welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for joining us for another weekend. It is a Saturday here and we're just getting started on chores. Well, I'm just getting started on chores. Lindy put the horses out, but she has conveniently scheduled a work meeting every Saturday morning, right during chore time. Hmm, I don't think that's a coincidence, but so she now gets out of doing chores um, six of the seven days a week. She does do nighttime chores, but to be fair, they're way easier than morning chores. So yeah, I think there's definitely a strategy behind the way she scheduled that meeting. Anyways, um, I'm going to get started on the morning chores and then we are actually going on a bit of a drive later today because we found something very exciting that we are going to use in the renovation of the downstairs kitchen, which we showed you last week. But first, let's get started on chores. need to get done today before we leave is to do a little bit of goat maintenance. Our goat herd, it's a really small herd, so we don't have a lot that we regularly have to do with them. <laughs> There's Tilly in the background. Um, but we do on a regular basis do hoof trimming, obviously just overall checks of condition and things like that when we're trimming them. And then we also give them a mineral supplement called Replement. In addition to that, we are also going to be cleaning their ears. They are La Mancha's. So a lot of people think that they don't have ears or that their ears were removed. We get that a lot. Why'd you cut their ears off? <laughs> like we didn't. <laughs> they have ears, they're just itty bitty because their ears are so small and sometimes they don't get the same amount of airflow that goats with larger ears do. So they're a little bit more prone to ear infections. We've had La Mancha's for years <laughs> and um, we've only had one issue with Gypsy. She was at this point, gosh, probably six years old, never a single other issue. We did ear cleaning periodically, but not on a regular basis. And she got just out of the blue, this really bad ear infection to the point where we actually had to take her into the vet and it affected her facial nerve. So it really freaked us out. We didn't know what was going on. Um, come to find out it was just a bad ear infection. So now we clean their ears on a little bit more regular basis since that happened. So we'll be doing that as well. And we think that Gypsy might actually be bred, which is a surprise. Our buck is in with our herd. However, he has a buck apron on. Hey, Lindy's here. We're talking about buck aprons. So anyway, so the buck apron basically just acts as a physical barrier so that he can't breed the females. Now it does not work on all bucks, but he's a very calm, very chill buck, isn't he? Like, 
Like, he's an anomaly. Yeah, he's amazing. And it works very well on him. And then we remembered, right after we reintroduced her back to the herd with her itty bitty little baby, we had his buck apron off. <laughs> it was summertime, so most large dairy goats only cycle in the fall into early winter, unless if you're using artificial hormones and things like that to bring them into a heat cycle. Um, but we forgot the Gypsy is actually a mini La Macha, meaning that she is a cross between La Macha, which is the large breed with no ears, and Nigerian, which is a small breed. And Nigerians can actually cycle all year long. Crazy, but she might be bred. So we're gonna bump her today, and we'll talk more about what that is, um, to see if we can see what's happening in there. Um, obviously, there's multiple ways you can tell if they're pregnant. There's um, urine tests, things, blood tests. You can do imaging, but we're gonna go the really like <laughs> old school route of you basically hold her in a um, certain manner. And then oftentimes if you move just right and they're at a right stage in development far enough along, you can kind of feel the babies and feel things inside of her that you wouldn't feel otherwise. It's a very like rudimentary way of checking for pregnancy. Um, however, we know her well enough and we know the way she carries and how she looks and how she acts. So she's a very predictable one for us, but we could always do blood tests and things like that as well if we really want to find out. I found our first Who is the first victim? It's Gypsy Girl. So this is sweet Gypsy. We like to use a horse pick and pick out their hooves. And then really it's just kind of those outside walls that you like to even out and sometimes the heel as well. It's also the time of year when they're shedding out. So you'll see a lot of goats and livestock that look like this right now. And they just look like terrible, them. right? They just look so awful. She's got a bit of a belly. An easy way to remember is that lunch is on the left, babies are on the right. So as you can see, if she's got a bump on the left, that's pretty normal, especially if they just ate, their rumen will kind of fill up. Um, that's not too uncommon. It's the bump on the right that she's suddenly showing. And again, we know her really well, so we know the way that she carries. And she definitely has a bump. So when you're trimming back hooves, you obviously want to hold their leg up nice and close to their body. You don't want to be stretching it or pulling it out. You want to keep it as close and tight to their body as possible. Look at all that fuzz you got coming out of you, honey. So when we clean their ears, we just use some cotton swabs and then we, she actually has like a prescription ear cleanser, um, which obviously like you can just use a standard one as well that you can use for like dogs, cats, other livestock. The little itty bitty ears. She's gotten really used to this over the years, but it's the same way you would clean your dog's ears. You just wanna try and pull out as much of the caked in goopiness as possible. Is that the nicest way to say that? The <laughs> caked in goopiness? Yeah, pretty much. There you go. Okay, bump. She's like, stop it. So that's a bit dramatic. Goodness, Gyps. Calm down. Easy. Easy. Hey. I'm sorry. I know that probably doesn't look good. I'm I'm like 80% sure she's pregnant. Are you ready? Good girl. She loves this stuff. Alright. Alright, sweetheart. You're done. That was you're it. Done. Oh, she's like, no, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself, thank you very much. Tilly says she's next. Tilly's next. All right, come on, Till. Go, go, go. Go to the sand. You know where to go. Get up on the sand. Tilly, Till. Thank you. So that's the beauty of a trained milking goat is <laughs> that they have done this so many times that they are pros. So here on Tilly, you can kind of see the difference between where you saw that belly on Gypsy. You definitely don't see that here on Tilly. I'm gonna check you for bugs. The other thing that we usually do in springtime is we do just an overall parasite. Um, we do a drip. It's an external, it just goes on their back. Same thing you would do like a flea and tick for your dogs. It's the same thing with them. We usually do it a little bit later in the season. So right now I'm just kind of checking them. It's much easier to see little mites and bugs and fleas on a light colored goat than a dark colored goat. So we like to check on Tilly because if she has them, that means basically everybody has them most likely. Um, 
I don't see any. All right, all done. She's like, no, I don't want to be done. Let's walk out. Come I on. like it here. Come on, all done. Let's go. Yeah. They definitely have no complaints about getting on the stand to be milked or anything else. They love it. Ignore the tripping hazards. All right, beautiful. Come on, honey. How old is he now? He's two now. God, that's nuts. This is the world's sweetest buck. And he's not done growing. No, he's a tall boy, but so well-mannered. Oh. Oops, sorry, Kanan, honey. You gotta get out of the way. Come on, bud. Stop. <laughs> uh, there you go. You okay, barely so can fit. you guys see the difference? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't fit on Here, the stand. So. Yep, so this is a problem. This was actually my stand from, um, it, it was for minis. And this is why we need to get a full-size dairy stand. <laughs> so this is the apron that we were talking about. And um, this is actually from Buck Aprons. So when we have him on the stand, we obviously check as well to make sure he doesn't have any rubbing. Um, I made these basically little pads for the straps. And he's done so well with it. He doesn't notice it's even there. It's kind of like for us wearing underwear and a bra, you know? You just don't even notice it after a while. Although I guess bras should I always be in that notice bra. <laughs> I know, I was like, I get those off as soon as I come home. Yeah, and for those of you wondering, like, does he smell? Um, that's a great question. So if you've ever smelled a buck, you have smelled a buck and you will never forget that smell. He only comes into rut is what's called. So rut season is in the fall. And he usually comes in in September through December. And his is not, again, very strong. And so he's able to like get the job done when we need him to, but he's still enjoyable. So he doesn't smell as bad as a lot of them. <laughs> we actually were concerned he was so chill he wouldn't get the job yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, we were a little worried. I like to believe that he's a- um, Gentle. He likes to court his ladies. That's right. Aw, yeah, buddy. Oh, did you run out again? Did you run out of food? It's just still a little in there. Let me get you some more. Oh, he does fit. Look at that. Magic. Barely. Come on, honey. Good boy. Handsome buddy. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I need a lasso. Oh, she did so oh good. Did you catch that? First go round, I did catch it. She's a pretty baby though. This kid makes me happy. Oh. Gotta kick her like your mom. She's spicy. Oh jeez. Okay. So with these little guys, it's actually easiest to just do this. Again, they're nice and secure. You're always holding their legs in and towards their body, not out and away from their body. Okay. So if you don't have a helper and you're trimming by yourself, you can still hold them up like this and just hold them like this and then you have your other hand free to trim. When they're little. Yeah, you can do it on the bigger ones. It's obviously harder, um, especially if you're a smaller person yourself. All right. And that's how it's done, folks. Snap time! <laughs> but yeah, it's not hard. And doing what well, was on my forehead. It's like goat, sh goat, goat sh stuff. Goat stuff. But now, nap time. Nap time. What about, um, what time is it? We have a little bit of time before we need to leave. Hot tub time? Hot tub time sounds amazing. Maybe we'll do that real quick before we go sit in the car for five hours. Yeah, we'll catch up with you in the car. Okay, we are on the road and we have Stanley in tow. So why are we going to Portland? To pick up a used old beat up sink. <laughs> no <Yes>. joke. <laughs> no joke. Um, the crazy stuff we do, but this sink is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's like an early 50s, it's like a steel freestanding sink unit. So it's got the yes. seat 
the big cast iron sink on the top and then the top. draining base yes with the little basin the red has got all these drawers they have like the original like contact paper in them oh my gosh Thank you. it needs some help it's got some cancerous rust on like the right side of it and it's going to be so perfect in the downstairs kitchen we are so excited for this project and if you saw last week's vlog um, we talked a little bit more about the downstairs kitchen renovation, what our plans are for it. So we've really been kind of working on those ideas and figuring out a little bit more of the details so we can start in. And then this just popped up. So we're like, well, we have to go get it. it I was, it was, it's perfect. It guys. is. I've never seen anything like it. I'm so excited. So it's worth the drive. It's going to be a, a, a day of driving. And then Lindy's actually leaving tomorrow on a business trip. So, thank goodness we were able to squeeze this in before she goes to. That's where you're supposed to say little rock. Little rock. <laughs> I missed it. She's not. I didn't understand the assignment. She's not trainable. I dropped the ball. Uh, all right, we'll check in with you guys as we get closer. Bye. pieces to go down the stairs. <laughs> so it's actually going to be a really fun project, but we're going to like redo it. Awesome. I'm excited. Stanley, he's barking at a crow, but you did so good, buddy. You did so good. All right. So now time for the return trip. First, a Fred Meyer. Oh yeah. We have to buy Zyrtec for the horse. <laughs> and Fred Meyer has the off brand. If you also have a horse, that consumes 10 allergy tablets a day. Um, buy the no-name brand Croker at Fred Meyer. It's really cheap. Just a, a fun little tip for those of you with itchy horses. <laughs> I'm sure there's so many of us I'm just out gonna there. say, I was like, I'm sure all the two of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To all five of us in the world. <laughs> all right, Stan, are you ready? He's a good boy. Let's go. You made it. Oh, graceful exit. Whew, okay, we made it. We're back. Now we just have to unload it. I gotta feel it. It's all feeling good. Okay, here it is. I know it doesn't look like much now. It's terrible lighting. But look how cute it is. It has the drain. There's a little bit of ceramic that we need to fix. And then this is the side with a little bit of rust that we need to fix. So cute. Actually in good condition. It's in very good condition, yeah. I mean, they painted it with normal like wall paint, so I'm gonna completely like scrape everything off to bare metal. Treat that side, like cut the cancer rust out, and then do the, I don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's like what you can do for like trucks and trailers when there's cancer, or there's rust like that. And then paint it whatever color we want, so it's super smooth metal finish. I love it. Yeah, it's so much fun. We have some some horses stalking us for their dinner. So I think we better go get them fed. So we're gonna go do our chores, get the animals taken care of, get ourselves taken care of, drink some wine. Go to bed. <laughs> yeah, great minds think alike. <laughs> so we will see you all next week. Bye guys. Bye.